Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be working through two buoyancy example problems. The first problem features a fully submerged cylinder in a state of equilibrium in a step stratified liquid and the second problem features a cuboid in a state of equilibrium in a continuously stratified liquid. Let's have a look at the first problem then. The diagram shows a solid cylinder which has a uniform density of rho naught that is submerged within a two layer liquid in a position of equilibrium. The upper and lower liquid layers have uniform densities of rho 1 and rho 2 respectively and we know that the density of the cylinder, rho naught, is greater than or equal to rho 1 and less than or equal to rho 2. Firstly, derive the expression for the proportion of the cylinder that's in the lower layer, denoted k, where k is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1, and then for the case where rho 1 equals rho, and rho 2 equals 3 over 2 rho, find the density of the cylinder, rho naught, in terms of rho, such that two thirds of the cylinder lies in the lower layer of the liquid. If you'd like to have a go at answering this question yourself before we go through it, you're welcome to pause the video here. Okay, so now you've had a chance to attempt it, let's work through the solution together. The cylinder has a volume of V, and so the weight of the cylinder, W, is equal to rho naught g v. Using Archimedes' principle, we know that the buoyancy force applied to the cylinder is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the cylinder. Letting v l denote the volume of the cylinder that is in the lower liquid layer, the buoyancy force, f b, is equal to rho 1 g times v minus v l plus rho 2 g v l. We can express VL as a proportion of the entire volume of the cylinder, such that VL is equal to K times V, and K is the proportion of the cylinder that's in the lower layer, and is what we're trying to find an expression for, for the first part of the problem. Using this expression for VL, we can write that V minus VL is equal to 1 minus K times V, and as we've just seen, VL equals KV. Substituting both of these into our equation for the buoyancy force, we get that Fb is equal to rho 1g times 1 minus k times v plus rho 2gkv. As the cylinder and both of the liquid layers have uniform densities, and as the axis of the cylinder is vertically aligned, we know that W and Fb must have the same vertical line of action. Additionally, the cylinder is in a state of equilibrium, so we know that Fb must be equal to W. Therefore, we get rho 1g times 1 minus k times v plus rho 2gkv equals rho naught gv. Dividing each term by gv, we get rho 1 times 1 minus k plus rho 2k equals rho naught. And we can expand the brackets, so rho 1 minus rho 1k plus rho 2k equals rho naught. Subtracting rho 1 from each side and then taking k as a factor, we get k times rho 2 minus rho 1 is equal to rho naught minus rho 1. And finally, rearranging for k, k is equal to rho naught minus rho 1 divided by rho 2 minus rho 1. And this here is the expression for the proportion of the cylinder that is in the lower layer of liquid that we are asked to derive for for the first part of the problem. Moving on to the second part of the problem, we are given the condition that rho 1 is equal to rho and rho 2 is equal to 3 over 2 rho and we have to find the density of the cylinder, rho naught, in terms of rho such that two thirds of the cylinder lies in the lower layer of the liquid. We know that k is the proportion of the cylinder that's in the lower layer and that the proportion of the cylinder that's in the lower layer must equal two thirds. So therefore, k is equal to 2 thirds, and using our expression we derived in the first part, 2 thirds is equal to rho naught minus rho 1 divided by rho 2 minus rho 1. Substituting in our terms for rho 1 and rho 2, we get that 2 thirds is equal to rho naught minus rho divided by 1 half rho. Rearranging for rho naught by multiplying each side by 1 half rho, and then adding rho to each side, we get that rho naught is equal to 1 third rho plus rho, which equals 4 over 3 rho. Therefore, we can conclude that for 2 thirds of the cylinder to lie in the lower layer of the liquid, 
the density of the cylinder must be equal to 4 over 3 rho. So we have now seen how we can apply Archimedes' principle to solve a buoyancy problem with an object fully submerged in a step stratified liquid. But now let's have a look at an object fully submerged in a continuously stratified liquid. The diagram shows a cuboid of uniform density rho naught that is fully submerged in a position of equilibrium in a continuously stratified liquid which has a density distribution of rho with respect to h is equal to rho1 plus rho2 minus rho1 divided by h0 times by h and this is the case from h equals 0 to h equals h0. Here rho1 and rho2 denote the densities of the liquid at h equals 0 and h equals h0 respectively. Derive the expression for the submergence depth d that you can see in the diagram. Again, you're welcome to pause the video here if you'd like to have a go at answering this question yourself before we go through it. So we'll start off by saying that the cuboid has a volume of v0 and so the weight of the cuboid, w, equals rho naught g v naught. And we will also note that v naught is equal to a times l, where a is its plan view cross-sectional area. Using Archimedes' principle, we know that the buoyancy force applied to the cuboid is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the cuboid. And because the density varies continuously across the height of the cuboid, the buoyancy force, Fb, is given by the integral of rho g a with respect to h, from a depth of d to d plus l. As gravity in the area of the cuboid is constant, regardless of depth between these points, we can factor g and a out of the integral, and then substitute in our density distribution, leaving us with fb is equal to g a times the integral of rho 1 plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by h0 times by h, with respect to h, from d to d plus l. The integral of rho 1 with respect to h is equal to rho 1 h, and the integral of h with respect to h is equal to 1 half h squared. So, carrying out this integral, we get g a times rho 1 h plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 h naught times by h squared, with boundary limits of d and d plus l. Substituting in our boundary limits gives us g a times rho 1 times d plus l plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 h naught times by d plus l squared minus rho 1 d plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 h naught times by d squared. Expanding the brackets and then simplifying the expression, this results in g a times rho 1 l plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 h naught times by l squared plus 2 d l. It would have taken too long to read out each of those steps, so you're welcome to pause it here quickly if you'd like to see the detail for how I got to this expression. Finally, we can take a factor of L out of the brackets, and using our expression for the volume of the cuboid, where V0 equals A times L, our equation simplifies to Fb equals G V0 times by rho 1 plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 h naught times by L plus 2D. We know that the cuboid is in equilibrium, and therefore FB must equal W. Substituting in our equations for FB and W, we get G V naught times by rho 1 plus rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 2 H naught times by L plus 2D is equal to rho naught G V naught. We can eliminate g and v0 and then subtract rho1 from both sides to give rho2 minus rho1 divided by 2h0 times by l plus 2d equals rho0 minus rho1. Then multiplying both sides by h0 and then dividing by rho2 minus rho1, we get 1 half times by l plus 2d equals rho0 minus rho1 divided by rho2 minus rho1 times by h0. And finally, rearranging for d, we get that d equals rho0 minus rho1 divided by rho2 minus rho1 times by h0 minus l over 2.
So we can conclude that this is the expression for the submergence depth, d, of the cuboid. Now we have seen how to apply Archimedes' principle to solve buoyancy problems for an object fully submerged in a step-stratified liquid and a slightly more complicated, continuously stratified liquid. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.